Yeah, a lot of sequins in that arena. Here, a lot of Corey Seager jerseys as we get set for Sunday night baseball. The Philadelphia Phillies and the Texas Rangers, the hometown team, off to a flying start. They're going powder blue tonight. There's the actual Corey Seager. How about 27 runs first two games? That is tied for the second most since 1900. The ball has been jumping at Globe Life Field. Marcus Semien so excited to be on Sunday night baseball. Trey Turner, newest Philadelphia Philly, and a team that, of course, last year was in the World Series. As we welcome you to Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, it's presented by Casamigos Tequila, and it's brought to you by those who drink it. Buster Only will join us in just a little bit. Meantime, Eduardo Perez, David Cohn, I'm Carl Ravitch. Welcome. It's been an interesting series, been an interesting offseason. Texas Rangers spent about 500 or committed $561 million. Jacob DeGrom is certainly the biggest piece. The offense has gotten the headlines, but the foundation here is pitching. It has to be pitching, right? I mean, that, I know I'm biased, but uh, naturally so. But when you get a chance to get Jacob DeGrom, you have to take that chance. Uh, even though you wonder how many starts he's going to make, he's that good. He's that important. When you look at the revamped rotation, Nathan Avaldi, Martin Perez, the holdover might be the horse of the staff right now. And then at the bottom, Andrew Heaney also brought in. So there's there's some swing and miss in that staff. The key is health. All right. Speaking of health, we just saw a shot of Bryce Harper at the end of baseball tonight's Sunday night countdown. He's here. He's getting healthier, which is huge because, of course, they lost Reese Hoskins for the year with an ACL blowout. Talk about the Philadelphia Phillies, or maybe relative to the division with the moves they've made. Well, I think what we're going to see, we're going to see it all in the first inning, right? Those are the guys that are going to have to be important. It's Trey Turner that has to lead the way. So far this year already with two triples in the first two games. Cal Schwarber and JT Realmuto, they get it going as well. They have to hold court. They're the ones, they are the leaders. They're gonna set the tone for the rest of the guys until Harper comes back and they're hoping that it's sooner than later. So it's the Philadelphia Phillies and the Texas Rangers coming up and both these teams spent a lot of money. They put the line in the water in an effort to reel in the big fish. Once you do that, is it going to be enough to get you to the promised land? It's been a while for the Rangers. The Phillies were there last year. That's right, Turner and DeGrom. And now that we've got you in the boat and on the team.
We all know that baseball is full of cliches. The season is a marathon, not a sprint. But no one's really running a race. You got to get on your horse. And there are no horses involved in any aspect of catching a baseball. We need one more piece to the puzzle. We win a title when, well, teams aren't puzzles at all. Or are they? Like the Phillies made it all the way to the series last year and came up a little short. They believe their missing piece is that guy, Trey Turner. Put him in a lineup and it all falls into place. The major league teams are always searching. Like Taylor Swift fans look for tickets to sold out shows. Uh, the Rangers here have been trying to solve baseball's Rubik's Cube since 2016, the last time they made the playoffs. So does adding the best pitcher on the planet right there, Jacob DeGrom, do the trick? Did they solve the Rubik's riddle? Of the Phillies finished their baseball jigsaw. Puzzling questions to be sure, and there are seemingly no certain answers. But Chris Young, who built this team for Texas, is convinced that they got the right guy leading it in Bruce Bochy, the Phillies, and Dave Dombrowski. They interviewed all the shortstops that were out there, Correa and Bogarts, and they feel like Trey Turner was the right guy for the team. Hard to argue against it, a $300 million man. He'll be leading off today, followed by Kyle Schwarber, JT Uriomuto. Nick Castellanos is in right field. Alec Boehm had a home running off from Jacob deGrom to start things. And then you get the right-handers in there. Josh Harrison is at left field. Edmundo Sosa plays third while Bo moves over to first base. Bryson Stotts, your second baseman. Christian Pache, who they just traded for, is in center field, and he will run down anything. Martin Perez, what a year last year. Incredible. You think about it. You talk, that's a late bloomer. Yes. The guy's been around 10 years. He's a 10-year vet in 11th year, and those are the best numbers he's ever had in his career right, right there on the board. 196 innings, that, that's putting on the big boy pants right there. Not too many pitchers get to that level anymore. That's right. Prior eight seasons, his ERA was over 430. Eduardo, you as into the WBC as anybody. How about the show that Turner put on there and what he did last season? It. Yeah, he put on a big time show. And then when all the lights were on, once they got to Miami, it was all Trey Turner. He was barreling up everything. It was just hard to get him out. And he wasn't leading off. He was in the middle of the lineup. He was hitting fourth, ninth sixth sometimes. Or seventh. Yeah, but he worked his way up to yeah. D. Rose lineup. All right, so Perez, the lefty, will get yeah. Turner to start. And the umpire, Chris Siegel, says, let's play ball, and here we go. Swings at the first pitch. Perez has made a living, at least last year, on the corners, and there's one down. Another one down. So Trey Turner comes in after signing an 11 year, $300 million deal. It'll take him through his age 40. Third year in a row that he has had 100 or more runs scored. He's got to get on. And that's a hard shot into the gap and left. It's cut off by Garcia. Turner with all his speed to second. And he slides in there with a leadoff double. And there's no substitute for that right there. He barrels the third pitch he sees at 107 miles per hour. But it is his speed period that he has once he makes contact. After seeing a changeup, fastball right down the middle. The sound says everything. And he was thinking, too, out of the box. And the best slider in the game right there, as smooth as silk. RBI opportunity for Kyle Schwarber, the designated hitter who led the National League in homers last year at 46. And of course, with all the new rules and disengagement, a guy like Turner is a threat to steal no matter what base he's on. He doesn't go here in the first one. He is on the corner, strike one. Wasn't anyone in the game that was shifted more than Kyle Schwarber. And now without the shift, he stands to benefit from the way the defense will play against him in the infield. Good job Come behind out. the plate. They've used a couple of different catchers. Mitch Garver was behind the plate yesterday, and all he did was homer twice and hit six. You can see the uh, colors on your screen indicate where Schwarber was defended last year. And not only him, but in this game, Corey Seager was another guy that fell victim to the shift as often as anybody and hit into it a lot. Well, speed playing a factor here, too, with nobody out and Turner on second. Seager's got to hold him at second. Third baseman's got to stay closer to third just in case. So speed is impacting the alignment as well. 
So that would count as a disengagement. He has one more of those than if he did it a third time, attempted to pick Turner off, and he didn't do it successfully, it would be a balk. Another one down. And in talking to the players, guys, before the game, I know you did too, but, you know, you go through spring training and you kind of get adjusted to it. And then you get into a real game and it feels like it's even a little quicker. Why is that? The intensity of the games, you, you just turn it up a notch. You're playing for real as opposed to the scripted spring training style. Ezekiel Duran's in left. Garcia is in center. Schwarber swings and misses at that. Robbie Grossman is in right field. Josh Young is at third. Seeger at short. Semyon at second. And Nathaniel Lowe is at first. Come out! So Schwarber almost like he's in a home run derby. You get a chance to press pause one time and he just used his one time out. So fastball right down Broadway that he pounds into the ground. It's a 10 mile per hour differential between the change up that he threw at 83 mm -hmm. then with the fastball at 93 down and that's one of the big reasons why Kyle Schwarber who led the league in strikeouts last year was able to foul that one off. thing that's really helped Martin Perez is the better mix of sinker. He always had a great sinker. He always led the league or among the league leaders in ground ball rate, but he's come up with that cutter and that change up and he's become much more unpredictable living on the edges. He really put the four seamer to bed. The next one to Schwarber and he fouls and spoils off another. You can really see him went down to a knee to make sure that he got back to ball there. You can see that unpredictability in his pitch usage right there in the sinker, changeup, and cutter. Occasional four seamer and occasional curveball, but throws all those pitches to both sides of the plate as well. Seeger playing right behind Turner. And low and semi and waiting for Schwarber. Here it comes. And swing and a miss. Good changeup at 83 got him and strikeout number one. Lefty, lefty, boy, that's just the hardest pitch to read for Schwarber. The change up down and in. First thing you think, Eduardo's probably thinking fastball. He's coming in on me. No, he isn't. He turned it over. And that's a dangerous pitch also for lefties to throw to a lefty. You have to have a lot of confidence in it, and that's one thing Martin Perez does have. Well, the roof here at Globe Life closed. It was open yesterday. It caused all sorts of problems for right fielders oh, as Turner took a huge secondary lead and I'm thought about throwing down and yeah, Martin has to mix his looks up at second base with Trey now it's with one there out. for him if he wants it it's yeah. there if he wants to take third I don't think you can stop him not going next pitch One two. this is down the byproduct of the running game. Absolutely. Pitchers get distracted. And speaking from experience, I hated it. <laughs> Vince Coleman dancing around on second base. I was a miserable wreck. Oh, got him to chase. Another changeup, and Rio Muto on a ball that bounced at the plate. Just imagine being that emotional wreck with the clock at the same time. You're not only looking at Turner, you're looking at the clock behind them. Perez against Philadelphia in 2022 didn't allow a run in 13 innings pitched. 2-1 to JT. Ah! Yes, sir, right on the corner where he makes a living. Cutter finds the strike zone at 89. Just excellent command of that pitch. Come out. He's interesting right now for Trey Turner. He's thinking about it. If I do go here. Young will abandon the position at third and could create a hole for Real Muto. Two two he's not going and this ball is lifted sky high. And in foul territory Seegers there for the second out. Well David Cohn of course back with us year two for us and by the way that guy the former. Texas Ranger superstar catcher Pudge Rodriguez now appearing on the K-Rod telecast, which you can see over on ESPN2. Feels like a game seven every single 
was 38. And there's Michael and Alex up top. Pudge Rodriguez. They, in this ballpark, have all sorts of reminders of the great Rangers of the past. And Pudge Rodriguez, certainly one of the Ball first one. pitch, a little down to Nick Castellanos, the right fielder. What a cannon for an arm Ooh. Pudge Rodriguez had. Played an American Legion ball, and he was our catcher. I was playing third base. He threw a ball to third. And it hit me right on the wrist. And I said, uh, Coach, I'm going to go to the outfield. <laughs> I'm done. Not while that guy's behind the plate. He might have had the best arm of any catcher in the history of the game. Two balls, no strikes. Turner off third. And that one is inside. So 3 0 with first base open to Castellanos. Give him the green light here early on. Early in the season. Big time struggle in 21 for Castellanos, and that ah! is called a strike. He didn't like it very much. Yep. It's his defense that kind of shines in the postseason. And that's something he is not known for. He's known for his bat. Trying to get around a leadoff double. Ball That's ball four to Castellanos, and he will drop the bat and take first base, and that brings up Alec Bohm, usually the third baseman. He's playing first base tonight. One of the things Perez did do last year, guys, was stay out of home run trouble. He only allowed 11 of them, third lowest rate in baseball. And he took about one homer every 18 innings. And he did not give up one in his last eight games started. Phillies have been bludgeoned the first two games. They'd love to get on the board first. Then he pours in a fastball at 92 to get him started. I really feel Eduardo like this guy is going to take a, a leap this year. Love his style of hitting in the box. He's just a good hitter. Gaining more confidence as he goes along, too. Yeah, you saw the big number, 7 for 13 against Perez, who misses down and in. One ball, one strike. Doesn't like to strike out either. One of those big guys that understands that putting the ball in play for him is important, and he's not afraid to go the other way as well. Biggest decline in strikeout percentage of anybody in baseball, down to 17% last year. Speedy Turner at second, Castellanos at first, and a brush back there as Bohm gets out of the way. Two balls and a strike. And already 24 pitches have been thrown by Martin Perez. He has to be able to hit the inside corner against righties for strikes. He hasn't been able to do so. When he elevates the ball, it's been leaking over and running away from the righty, and that's dangerous for him. The swings that he's getting from the Philly hitters, though, are balls that really aren't in the zone at all. Yeah, he is not giving in. Change up there. The veteran presence on the mound will not panic. Two balls, two strikes. Good crowd here with the huge crowd next door for the Taylor Swift concert. And here comes a meeting on the mound. Jonah Heim will go out to talk to Martin Perez. Yeah, he shook that one off, Carl. It's one of the keys, obviously, with, with the pitch timer in play, is who's going to drive the bus? Mm -hmm. Is the pitcher going to have the pitch calm and call his own game? Or is he going to rely on the catcher and kind of go with the suggestion? If you get into uncertainty and you start shaking him off, then you're up against it with the clock. Well, nobody used the pitch comm better than Dylan Cease in our game to open the season for the White Sox. Here it comes. Gets the call, third strike. What a lift for Martin Perez. And that's the pitch he's going to need if he's going to be successful tonight. The fastball inside. It runs in. It tails. Guess what? It freezes the right-handed hitters.
Six years since they had a winning record, the Texas Rangers, and they spent a ton of money. 68 and 94 last year, and they anticipate at the very least a winning record this year and hope to threaten the playoff spot. The lineup will start with Sunny in the second baseman. The leadoff home run of the game yesterday. Seeger, Nathaniel Lowe, who was outstanding last year, is at first base. Adelise Garcia, the center fielder. Young is their number one prospect. He plays third base. Grossman, Garver, Heim, and Ezekiel Duran will be in left field. Not an easy lineup to navigate. It is not. Uh, the, the Rangers are everybody's favorite pick to sort of really make a big leap this year. Here's Bailey Fault with the lefty for the Philadelphia Phillies. Semyon swings at the first one. I'm, I'm just not sure, and that thing was hit foul pretty high and pretty far back. There's any way you could hit a foul ball to the level that we are at at Globe Life Field. I agree. That one misses. I mean, we look across at the old Texas Ranger ballpark, and just beyond that, Six Flags Amusement Park, we are as high as what appears to be any roller coaster at Six Flags. Ball. You got to stay back on your call for home runs here. I hear you. Don't get out in front. Just lay out, and I'm getting crushed because I, I apparently mentioned Taylor Swift, and Eduardo went into a song of hers, and I didn't pay attention. I didn't. I didn't acknowledge it. Yeah. You, then, was it you who said it too? We'll be yep. dropping lyrics all night. Ball three. Yeah, I, I am not. That's not my wheelhouse. We're trying to be the best Swifties we can here, Carl. You put your. Uh, here we go. Yeah, we're way up here. You see us somewhere? Yeah. That's in there for a strike. Semi was trying to steal first with a walk instead. Count goes full. Semi and yesterday when we came over to talk to the teams expressed how excited he was to be on Sunday Night Baseball. When you play for the Blue Jays at Oakland, he's like, we just weren't on. And he watched all the time. And now he gets a chance. And he hits one into left field past the third baseman, Sosa. And Marcus Semien off to a really good start here in 2023. And on Sunday Night Baseball. And exactly that, Carl. He told me today, as soon as he saw me, he's like, finally, I'm on Sunday Night Baseball. First at bat, look how quick he is through the zone. Quiet. Head stays still. Completely different than last season where it, he struggled off the gates. Four for 11 to start the season, and here is Corey Seeger. And Falter, that's one throw over, and a good job by Bohm to get off the bag just to make the catch. So the new rules now, Falter can throw over one more time. It's called the disengagement. And after that, if he does it and doesn't get the guy, that's Bach. He's going to second base. So you see the attitude of the player, the hitter, the offensive player, will he come further off? Get Seeger to swing and miss. Or try to draw that second throw exactly. if you can. So this is where the strategy comes in. Simeon very much a threat to steal as well. That's outside. That's outside. Corey Seager has been surrounded now by better players and the development of Lowe and a guy like Garcia. They really believe Young is going to take a big step. They don't worry about scoring runs. It's prevention. And boy, did they go out and make a whole bunch of moves to do that. Big swing from Seager. Fouls it back. 33 homers. Last year, 83 runs batted in. 33 homers was a Major League Baseball record for left-handed shortstops. All two. Certainly from an old school standpoint, a big hole on the right side. That Huge. He hasn't seen in probably his whole career. He was shifted in 92% of his plate appearances last year, 92%. Up the middle, playing for a double play. Yep. No go, and here's Semi in the second good throw, and he is out. JT Real Muto got him. And JT Real Muto, when he throws the second base, it's not that conventional over the top. Oh Watch how quick the release is. So athletic. Releases at three quarters and works and believes in the tail that the ball will have and laying it right there easy. Catch and tag for Turner. Lightning quick. You're not kidding. Wow. 
And the next one is Seeger, and that one is hit into right. It's going to get down. And of course, many people at home, oh, why'd you try to steal? You could have first and second, but not necessarily by that. Seeger with a hard single into right. And now with one down, one on. 112 miles an hour off the bat. Guys, watch his release point right there. It's straight over the top. Comes right from the middle. There's not really that much of an angle coming in, and that's why lefties do not struggle as much against Falter as you see lefties struggle against other conventional lefties. And here is Nathaniel Lowe. First baseman off a monster year. Nope. Fouls that straight back. My man. Thank you. You guys like that 1.76 pop time where a 2-0 is the average. 176 is so much better than the league average. You saw it through the eyes of Umcam. Over on K-Rod, they're showing the entire game through the umpire's camera. This inning. Ha! That's as good as it gets. 176. Yes. It's an athlete behind home plate. Maybe the best athlete on the field. I would imagine they brought up JT Riomuto's pop time with Pudge Rodriguez, who probably said, yeah, that's that's different. play off the bat of low. How about a 302, 27 homer, 76 RBI year for Nathaniel Lowe. And a good start this year. He's four for nine with three RBIs and an OPS. One more look through Umcam, the entire inning this way on the K-Rod cast misses off the plate. Great backdrop also for the hitter. You get to be able to see the baseball clearly out of his hands. One, two. Really good pitch. Bailey Falter is he got him with a slider. And there are two down. Oh, Bailey Falter's got a curveball and a slider. He'll throw them both. Mostly curveballs to righties and sliders to lefties to put them away. And you can see that's just outstanding execution. Perfect location, shape, swing and a miss. Here's Adelis Garcia, the center fielder, another guy that had a career year last year and ah! poured in. Strike number one, a curveball at only 74 miles an hour. Batting average, on base, slugging, OPS, all personal best last year for this guy. And Stott way up the middle. Oof, another good pitch from Falter. He's ahead 0-2. Bryson Stott is right about on the line of how far you can go before you're going to venture into maybe the other team saying I think he's too far off. All the infielders' feet need to be on the dirt. You need two infielders on each side of second base. Swing and a miss. Bailey Falter, welcome to the game. After a single by Semyon and a caught stealing, and a single by Seeger, he strikes out low and he strikes out Adelise Garcia. Underway on Sunday night baseball. And right now, the pitchers get the upper hand.
Sunday Night Baseball is presented by Casamigos Tequila. It's brought to you by those who drink it. And one of the things we have going here in this uh, ballpark is, is legit food. I mean, we are going shrimp cocktail there. This whole entire state celebrating sports this weekend and food fair everywhere. Poor Eduardo Perez missed out on the meal last night, Tony. And that, that, he, he's still wearing that. Not sure that we're going to find another one like last night's. Yeah, Baseball thought. conversation to Nick and Sam's. And there's a bat that flies. The ball up the middle. The second baseman, Semyon, makes a nice play to get Josh Harrison. Showing off that shortstop arm of his that he proudly displayed as an Oakland athletic before going to the Toronto Blue Jays and moving over to second base. Watch him and his athleticism. We've seen it from Real Muto first for the Phillies and now Marcus Simeon with the arm and range. And remember Marcus Simeon in Oakland for a while was towards the bottom when it came to defense and Ron Washington is largely credited with turning Simeon around. Walsh will tell you nobody worked harder than Simeon did. And this one is down the line in right. It gets down. Mundo Sosa takes the turn to second, and he will look back out to right and see the ball come in. He's got a double. So he and Turner now, each with a double in the game for the Phillies. And Mundo not messing around. First pitch he sees of the season. Gets a double down the right field line. Little run away. Keeping it fair as a hitter when you see that. Get the first one out of the way. Oh, man, it's easy to run to second. That's very well done. You go down and dig out that Perez sinker. Chance for Bryson Stott, the second baseman. One, one. Close, but he didn't get it. It's one ball, no strike. So it's just a threat to steal. He's so versatile as a defender. Bryson Stott went back and watched every game of the postseason and recognized one flaw in his swing he wanted to address. And that was the high fastball. He realized everybody was attacking him with high fastball after high fastball. So he put a lot of work in to try to address that. He's got a good count, 2-0. Oh. Christian Pache is on deck, the new center fielder. Ball three, okay. Come out. Is that something you can do just with T work, Eduardo? If you're having trouble with the high fastball, is that you got to rework your swing a little bit or shorten it up, or how do you do that? In your eyes, you have to rework also where you're looking at to make contact. A lot of hitters sometimes what they do is as you look up because it's easier to go from top to bottom as a hitter. The opposite of fielding. Boy Perez with another walk, his second, and that was four pitches to the eighth hitter, Stott. Now two on, one out for Pache. But easier said than done to be able to do that. Especially high velocity. High velocity, and that's what the Astros did against him in the World Series. You know, you watch Martin Perez's body language on the mound. There you saw him stand behind the, the rubber. Stare out. We got a pitch clock violation against the hitter, it appears. How about that for your first A-B of the season? Pache, was he not engaged with the pitcher Perez in time? On the ground, fielded Young. Play and Perez gets out of the first with a strikeout. And how about the first pitch to Pache? Ground into a double play. We'll see Young when we come back at the plate.
Welcome back everyone Sunday Night Baseball Trey Turner you can ask him a question use the hashtag ask SNB on Twitter he's got the microphone on and joins us now as we get set for Bailey Falter to face Josh Young starting out the bottom of the second inning. Falter back to back strikeouts to end the first and the first one to Young misses inside Trey you told me yesterday most people would consider a free agency in which you sign an 11 year deal for 300 million a lot of fun you didn't like it very much tell people what that experience was like and why you didn't like it it's uh, oh no yeah young hit that one hard deep right field Josh Young over the wall and the Rangers lead it one to nothing. Well, a lot of people in Texas know the power that Josh Young has had even since his college days and he's taken it right up to this level now healthy gets the falter pitch fastball right down the middle and as a right handed hitter that's what you exactly should do off falter as he comes in challenging you with the number one three hundred and eighty two feet just got over the wall Robbie Grossman. He's off to a good start. Sorry about I'm sorry about all that. You guys Trey. Are bad luck. It's yeah. all right. It's okay. all right. It's your guys' fault, not mine, not ours. <laughs> I, I will uh, say this: you helped read the homer when you said, "Uh oh." No, it's just it's loud in here. This is a good place to hit the last few days. Um, it's been fun playing here. It's my first time, but um, hopefully we can get this dub tonight and get back on track. Yeah. So why was the free agency thing? What's what's the headaches involved with that? I mean everything. I I just uh, I wanted to. No. Oh. Nice baby. Nice play. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I made the right decision, you know, and uh, not just for me, but for my family and, and just everything. And took it really seriously, obviously. And uh, a lot of things are important to me. Um, and just try to weigh all options. And it just, you know, a lot of phone calls with your agent back and forth almost every day, two, three times a day. And it just, I uh, wanted to relax and enjoy my off season. It felt like it was, it was kind of crazy, but. I think it worked out perfectly. And here's Mitch Garver. A huge day yesterday for Garver with a couple of home runs. Hey! Your offseason, or at least your spring, included playing in the WBC in which you shined. What was that experience like? Oh, man, it was incredible. Uh, just the guys and the coaching staff and the tournament, everything was just awesome. Uh, a little crazy, you know, having multiple games in the same stadium and running in and out and, and kind of being rushed a little bit. But as far as games and being around the guys and just having a you know once in a lifetime experience it was second to none and it was it was a blast. There's Falter's pitch to Garver. Ha! Yeah so I talked to Kyle Schwarber yesterday and he was on the team along with JT but when Kyle saw his name in the number three spot he's like wait, wait look around the room like <laughs> me number three you were you were all over the place in the lineup what was it like to see what DeRosa did every day with the lineup. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong, right? You got a, right. you know, an all-star lineup and just guys that have produced for so many years and are really good players. So, um, you know, somebody's going to be hitting, you know, seven, eight, nine when they're really usually hitting one, two, three on their right. your normal team. So it's going to be somebody. Like I said, you know, then it's just you're going to get your at bats. So you better be ready. You better not be pouting about hitting ninth when, you know, you got Mookie and Trout and uh, Paul. Nolan and those guys. I mean, it's just unbelievable lineup, and I mean that goes for all all countries too, right? I mean, yeah. you, you can look at it anywhere, and that that happens. So uh, just be ready, have some fun, and I think you know I think we did a good job of that. What was it like playing next to Nolan Arenado? Yeah, I don't run after anything. <laughs> <laughs> he made a play one day, and he almost ran into me, and I was just watching him. I was like, oh, I probably should pay attention. <laughs> and just him throwing on the run and. The glove, watching work and batting practice stuff, it's it's special and obviously you see why he's got what nine, ten gold gloves or whatever it is, but platinum. He's you know, that too. He's uh he's a stud, so that was fun. Three balls, two strikes on the way to Garver from Falter. <laughs> Not me, Jay. Thank you. I didn't want to catch that. Josh Harrison is in. Boy, you've done a good job. You've described the homer. You've told Sosa to throw the ball, and now you call that Jay. I, yeah, I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> Usually people don't hear me, so. Here you go. Do you have a favorite cheesesteak place yet? This is from a uh, viewer at home. No. Um, I've heard a lot of names and a lot of places that I need to try out, but um, I've been to a couple of the tourist spots, and then everyone tells me, no, you got to go here, you got to go here. So, oh no. How it's worked the first two Sundays. Huh? How that about baby. that? Nice catch. 
Hey, man, thanks very much for joining us, Trey. We yep. really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate well done. You. Easy, right? Oh, yeah. Not too bad. Not a boy. Thank God he made that play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God is right. <laughs> One nothing. Texas on the home run from Josh Young. Coming up during the seventh inning stretch, don't miss the exclusive trailer debut of Marvel Studios' all-new original series, Secret Invasion. It's coming soon only to Disney+. Plus. Now there's some pop in that bat right there, Josh Young. Josh was telling us a story. He's from Texas, near that San Antonio area, played high school football. He was the quarterback. He said the defense on his football teams in high school was so bad. This ball is lifted deep to left field, going back, looking up, and he will see it drop into his glove. Left fielder Ezekiel Duran, so quickly Trey Turner retired. But he said the defense was so bad, they gave up an average of 62 points a game. Young had no chance at quarterback. 62 a game. That's what drove him to baseball then, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Must be a pretty athletic family. Oh. Jace, Texas Tech star was Josh. And it, it was one of those where everybody who is an athlete, they'll have a story why they have a chip on the shoulder. Nobody really recruited him out of high school. Nobody. Well, both What's brothers inside? first round per draft picks, right? Yep. Yeah. That's pretty remarkable. You get two brothers that are both first round picks. Look at the size on him. You're thinking, how is he not being recruited? Schwarber struck out his first time up in a little frustrating start to the season for Schwarber. That kind of guy, though, ended up with 46 homers last year. Even the WBC, Eduardo, you know, you're watching him, and he's in the middle of that lineup, and he's over, and he's not making it, and all of a sudden, boom, hits one over the wall. Oh, he's, he has the ability to turn the page immediately. He doesn't dwell on what happened in the last at bat, and I think that's what's given him a lot of success. For being D DFA'd, comes over and, and has a monster season. I just thought Buster's reporting on that. What a great teammate he is. It was really spot on. Yeah, Buster, a great story on ESPN.com, ESPN Plus. What, what did you learn, Buster, about Schwarber that you didn't know? Well, there are just so many anecdotes from his teammates, but Kevin Long, their hitting coach, who of course worked with Schwarber down in Washington, moved up to Philadelphia, said among all the players that he's been around, Schwarber is the best teammate that he's ever seen he said because when he shows up to the ballpark every single day he cares about two things one winning and two connecting his teammates. Soup spoon very important in a clubhouse stir it up. Swing and a miss this gets him to chase Schwarber is 0 for 2. Who is the best soup spoon that you ever play with. 
Jeez, oh, yeah. so many behind the scenes. Well, Keith Hernandez was pretty good with the Mets. You know who was quietly a good soup spoon? George Brett with the Royals. <laughs> really? Yes. I had one as a pitcher, Daryl Kyle. Yes. Lost him at early. Rio Muto, 1 0, ground ball, slow one, and Young to his left, two steps, and he fires to first. Martin Perez gotten seven outs in the last 19 pitches that he has thrown. Bottom three coming up, Duran in the top of the order. You're watching Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. It's presented by Casamigos Tequila. It's brought to you by those who drink it. Muster only. Eduardo Perez, David Cohen, Carl Ravitch, Andy Jacobson, our producer. And a reminder, next week, we'll be in Atlanta, Easter Sunday, for the Padres and the Braves. Xander Bogart's betting leadoff today for the Padres. He went yard. They will be wrapping up a four-game set at Truist Park. It's available on Deportes and ESPN Radio. Our coverage will start at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. Congratulations and a shout out to our buddy Tim Kirchner. I heard him say this was the 25th anniversary, 25 years of his first baseball tonight. Hall of Famer, studio with Nicole and Jessica, Jeff Passon as well. We begin the bottom of the third inning. But Martin Perez, the last half, you can see how a pitcher settles in. You know, it's hard to explain, but sometimes it takes a, an, inning, an inning or two to sort of get the rough edges worn off we stop trying to spot the ball and you just start turning it loose and trusting it Ezekiel Duran that's a fair ball past the dive of Alec Bohm and Duran who really impressed during the spring he plays infield outfield he played a little short the 23 year old hit over 350 in the Cactus League and when you finish with seven doubles in your last 12 spring games and a couple of homers, you can make a team make an impact. Yeah, came over in the Joey Gallo trade, along with Josh Smith. You can hear Larry Boa talk about being 0-2. Of course, the fans really understand how difficult this game is to play 200 games in 200. This ball is lifted deep to left center, but it's going to stay in this yard, and Pache is under it to make the play. One of the great characters of the game, Larry Boa, right? I mean, just an all-timer. Down in the dugout earlier today, our buddy John Cruck is here as well. We'd love to see Crucky at the ballpark. He, of course, does a lot of the Philadelphia Phillies games. They're going to fly to New York. He's going to be on those broadcasts. But he and Bochi were talking about Larry Boa. Bochi asked him how Larry Boa was doing, which, of course, then led Cruck to some very colorful story about Larry Boa. 
Kroc only knows colorful stories. Always. <laughs> He's very consistent at that. <laughs> Oh, and one from Falter to Seeger. And hard center field, Pache going back, and that's what he does so well. Boy, did he run that down and make it look relatively routine. Christian Pache, Dave Dombrowski realized it's probably ending where he was out west. He just couldn't figure out his offense, said Mark Kotze. So he went in and said, We're, we love an outfielder. We got Kevin Long. We can maybe figure out the offense because this is, this is elite. Yes. Without a doubt. Well, absolutely. And when he was in Atlanta, a lot of people thought this was the second coming of Andrew Jones in center field. Even had his number. By the way, Andrew Jones getting his number retired this year in September. But the offense has really not come yet for Christian Pache. And he's going to be with the right guy in Kevin Long. Right back at you. Look at Bailey. Falter field his position. Boy, after that first inning where both Falter and Perez were laboring a little bit, things have picked up for a third of the way through. It's still zero for the Phillies, and the Rangers up one nothing. It is Texas one Philadelphia nothing a Josh Young home run the difference as we are back on Sunday night baseball and Bailey Falter and this guy Martin Perez have really settled in. It'll be Castellanos Bohm and Harrison. Ah! There you go starting out with strikes both these guys have started off many of the hitters with first pitch strikes. So it doesn't feel like it's moving quickly and talking to the players we talked about that intensity does it feel that way to you guys up here is it moving quicker you know when it gets going there's some quick one two three innings is what I've noticed now you still get some some slow down innings where hits happen and base running happens but when it, the pace just the overall crispness of the pace Whew. so much better so much better and I think for the managers and we had this conversation with Rod Thompson it's about also Things can happen quickly that you have to get your bullpen up, but you have to also protect your bullpen. Oh. So you'll see these big innings come up. Look at the numbers. The stolen bases are widely different. 17 in 2022, 49 through the first three days of the season. The attempts are way up by 30. The stolen base attempts, you can see, shaved about 25 minutes. Martin Perez just missing down there, but you could see his style of pitching 
in the shadow zone. Every pitch he throws is shooting for the corners. That's why he was struggling a little bit early, because he was missing just off, but he didn't panic. And really, for me, his changeup, that one right there, has been his best pitch so far tonight. Here's Bohm off to a 375 batting average start. Again, a home run to right off DeGrom to get things rolling for Philadelphia in the first game. But the first two games overall have been Texas's 27 runs. Bohm is one of the young players on the Phillies that they believe will take a major step. I know you referenced it, but everybody knows about Rio Muto. They know about Harper. They need their young guys, Stott and Bohm to make that next step to then fortify the Turners and Schwarbers and Rio Mutos and Castellanos. The young players get confidence. Doubles turn into homers. He's definitely got some more pop to give. Well, that's another one really oh, no, close. And Perez call. looks over. And he watches. Yeah, they cut him with a balk. Still 2-0. 2-0, yeah, 2-0. Down to second base goes Castellanos. That was a changeup also that he threw again on the 2-0 pitch. But goes right back to the 2 0 count as the ball was called. So, into scoring position now, Castellanos with nobody out. Got to have a discernible stop. Ah! And if Alec would have noticed early on, that's a free swing he could have right there. As a hitter, you're taught if you hear Bach, just go ahead and take that free hack. Coming inside again, and this one in the hole and past the shortstop Seeger. And up 90 feet goes Castellanos. Bohm with a good hit. First and third, nobody out. Good piece of base running by Castellanos because he was stuck in no man's land a little there. But he realized that, that Young actually broke towards third base, not towards the baseball. If he would have broken towards the ball, then he can go. But right there, you see him hesitate. No way he was going to score. With no outs. And Bohm hit a good pitch too, in off the plate, cutting in on his hands. Just cut him off at the spot. Phillies had runners in scoring position in the first and second. And the first pitch to Harrison is on the corner. Strike one. Harrison came in and pitched the last inning for the Phillies yesterday in the blowout. And here he is tonight starting in left field. 0 for 4 runners in scoring position has been a problem for Philadelphia early this season. Swing and a miss late on that one and it's way outside. It's a classic Dave Dombrowski move right you're trying to yes. win now. This type of player fits on a team trying to win right now. Veteran presence in that clubhouse. Oof. Nibbling and he can't get the call. Just quickly back to that point you made, Eduardo. Balk swing the bat. Hitter hits a ground ball to shortstop, and he's thrown out. They just like what happens? Well, in that situation right there, it's a free swing. You go right back to that 2-0 count. Even if you make an out now, if it's let's say a home run, yep, that counts. This is on the ground. Young will go to second for one to first double play. Martin Perez gets the two outs, but in to score from third is Castellanos, and it's 1 1. What a great job at third base by Young on that. Already thinking two and understanding who the runner is. Harrison not running like he did when he was a pirate back in the day, but still attacking the baseball. Ball hits dirt, you're supposed to attack. He did just that. Perfect feed to Simeon, and then on to low at first. Run scores, but you get two. Martin Perez has always been one of the best ground ball double play pitchers in the big leagues. Had 20 of those last year. Yeah. Now Thursday night game, Eduardo Bregman made a similar play but came home with it. Different runners on scoring situation. Different situation as well because you have Framber Valdez just like Perez. It's a lot of ground balls, but here you're attacking the ball. It's a little bit towards your left. Yes. And with that, you can get that double play. And it's early in the game. And Bregman was coming in on a ball that was hit really right at him. There's another chance for Young, stays down on it. And he is safe at first base. And Mundo Sosa beat it out. 
the reason he beats it out is on contact, he is already, the balance is already going towards first base. Great call at first base by Ben May. Can't wait to hear from Sarah Langs on this sprint speed here down the first. That's elite speed by, just by the eye check. That's getting it down the line. And a huge long lunge to the front of first base, so he's safe. Mundo Sosa, here's Bryson Stott. One throw over. Wasn't like that was a high chopper to third. But that was, was it wasn't a lot of time, and he no. beat that beat that throw. Yeah, maybe the ah! slightly bigger bases, each base square inches larger. Maybe that helped him out. Sarah Lang's right on key, right on point. Twenty nine point nine feet per second. That is clearly elite. Elite's 30, and here's a little one into left field. That's going to get down, and the Phillies making some contact against Martin Perez this inning. What these two hitters, Edmundo Sosa hustling down the line, and then Bryson Stott getting on. Christian Pache now comes up to bat, gives Turner an opportunity if he does not get a hit here to lead off the next inning again, turning over that lineup. Sosa and Stott have been on base now four times. Sosa with a double and a single. Stott with a walk and a single. Suit up this year, MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic caps, T-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your favorite team at MLBShop.com. Turner on deck. Long hasn't had a ton of time to work with Pache, but a big opportunity for him. In the ninth spot, grounded out to third his first time up. It was a double play. We're going to see a lot more of those infield hits this year, right? Base closer to the plate, bigger. It's also closer to the fielder because with the throw, the first baseman can reach a lot more infield hits this season. Ball strike two. You wonder, too, are we going to see more instant replay? And I know the challenge is I brought that up with one of the officials from Major League Baseball. You're going to have a lot more bang bang plays. Or have managers like Bochi or anybody else asked for more replay review, which I don't think anybody at home really is really begging for. There you go. Pache just got caught with his bat on his shoulder. Three pitches. And Martin Perez strands a couple. He gets a big double play in the inning, but it is 1-1. We head to the bottom of the fourth here in Texas.
Back here in Arlington with Rangers manager Bruce Bochy. Tell me what it's like to be in the dugout. Oh, what a great feeling. I, that, that opening day, I mean, it, it felt like it was my first game. I, I was so excited about it, so hyped up, and uh, it's just good to be back. 26 years manager, and you come back as baseball implements all these new rules. Tell me the one that you find yourself still trying to catch up with. Well, I, I mean, I have to say the pitch clock. It goes a little bit faster, so you know you you got to get used to it. You got to make your decisions a little bit faster. But uh, I, I like it. To be honest, it's kept a good pace of the game, so I'm good with it. Coach, thanks. Back to you guys. Buster, thank you very much. Got a chance to talk with Chris Young, who put this whole thing together. You know, instant credibility. I mean, Bochi with his three World Series with the Giants, instant credibility. As Adolis Garcia looks at one down. Think about Showalter in New York. He had a couple of periods in which he was off for three years, then he came back. Bochi off for three years, then he comes back. Dusty. Off for a few yeah, years. Yeah, a couple years. Big swing and a miss from Garcia. I guess the other part of it is it's nice when Chris Young calls him and says, hey, I'm just curious, you know, any interest? And he says, yes, but, but that comes with I'm interested as long as, as long as the organization's interested in winning. He's not too interested, that guy, in going to a team that's rebuilding. Yeah, that's a great point, Carl. And that this is this is the spot for Bruce Bochy right now. And Chris Young talked about, and anybody who knows Boach knows this about him, that there's a calmness about him, but yet an intensity, that balance, that yin and yang that's hard to hard to find in a veteran manager and commands respect, but has a calming influence on the clubhouse as well. Twelfth all time with DeRocher, who he'll pass. Dusty Baker, of course, accumulating wins. He brought up an interesting point in our conversation, too. Uh, maybe the success of Buck, maybe the success of Dusty has people more interested in a manager that's obviously a little bit older. Swing and a miss there. And I think absolutely, and adding to that, you have all the number guys that are in that clubhouse and, and you know, seeing the analytics department and all that, and he challenges them as well to be better give me more numbers and they actually ask him a lot of questions of what do you see and how do you quantify that. Bochi 67 years old and the next one sails high and away. But there's a move away from the group think in terms of everybody's kind of an echo chamber where we're all either analytics driven or we're all old school driven. There's got to be sort of a, a push and a pull where you work together. I think that's what Bochi brings, and that's why they brought him in there. And certainly they have a huge analytics department. Every major league team does nowadays. And everybody wants to put, you know, sort of the quotation mark around the analytics. Well, there's so much to analytics. The medical part of it, the pitching part of it, does pitch it, design. Doesn't fit under one blanket? It does not. Young, a huge swing, and it's fouled off at the plate. Rio Muto cannot hang on to it. It's almost Look. become an excuse, you know, oh, blame the analytics has ruined the game. Nothing could be further from the truth. A lot of the analytics has, has enhanced this, especially on the pitching side. Not only medical data, how to train, but also pitch design, the velocity training, the spin rate, designing your pitches, understanding what you do well. 2-2. Two -two. Young beats it into the ground. That's fielded by Stott, and Young is retired. Time now for planning ahead, brought to you by Hoya Financial. Davis, the owner, invested a ton of dollars into free agency. 2022, it was really focused on the offense. Seager, Semyon, yeah, they brought Martin Perez over. I'm not sure they thought they were going to get out of Perez what they did get. In 23, it was all focused really on pitching. DeGrom, Eovaldi, Heaney. $828 million ah! commitment. Massive. I think it was... Michael Young, who is telling Chris Young, of course, Michael Young, the great Texas Ranger, this is like an untapped major opportunity here in Texas. Like, just dying for a really good baseball product. you got to put it on the field. And Chris Young, who grew up around this area and grew up a Ranger fan, knows the potential here. He yeah. played with the Royals, and he saw what it did for that market. And he knows what a winning product could do here in this community. Uh, look, it's... It's not the curse of the Bambino. It's it's not the curse of the Billy Goat, but it's it's not nothing. 
You'd be the first championship team here in Texas. This place will go nuts. Grossman on the ground, ranging to his left, the third baseman, Sosa, and across the diamond to the guy that usually plays third baseman, Bohm. Through four, it's 1-1. One, one. Turner, Schwarber, Riamuto, and we come back. Back here in Arlington to Phillies manager Rob Thompson. You guys gave up 27 runs the last two days. With that context, how about Bailey Falter tonight? He's been great. You know, yeah, we got ambushed a little bit the first two games, but uh, he's been great. He's throwing strikes. He's attacking hitters. He's landing his breaking ball. Hasn't thrown his change up yet, but uh, that's another pitch for him to get right handers out. He's doing a great job. You gave us an update before on Bryce Harper. It seems like he's progressing. What's next for him? Yeah, he's doing great. It looks like once we get uh, home after the Yankees series, he's probably going to hit on the field, um, and then he'll progress to some live arm and some some at bats in minor league games, possibly. So I don't know when it's going to be, but he's doing really well right now. Rob, right, thanks. Back to you. Well, there is Bryce Harper, and he's going to join us in the sixth inning to talk about his recovery, the off season, home run from last year's postseason. Look forward to talking with Harper. Sixth inning. But really encouraging news. I mean, my goodness, it just felt like there was going to be a long time before we were going to see him back again. And that is apparently not the case, which is good news for the Philadelphia Phillies. Two and one at Turner. Slashes this one towards the line and right, and it's going to get into the seats. Now, Rob Thompson said his bat speed was already there. Yeah. That was stunning to me that he's already ready to swing the bat. They're just worried about him falling or sliding or doing other things where he'd have to really brace himself as you said before earlier in the game. Two balls two strikes. I thought Eduardo asked a really good question when we were in that meeting like well, how do you know when the elbow is ready to be fallen on. Yeah, think about it. Right now, I don't want to fall on mine. <laughs> Turner the other way, end of the bat. That's going to get down, and here's a dangerous base runner for the Phillies. Boy, they have put pressure on Perez, haven't they, each inning? They have, but this is the ultimate pressure when you can have Trey Turner on with no outs. And yes, you have Schwarber that struck out twice, but this pitch, see that cut, you see the line, see a little dot? Outside corner trying to freeze him. Trey, no stride, hitting it right where it came from. It's a good ball player right there. Hit a bullet his first time up, almost went deep his second time up, and then hit the other way there. So we're looking for his first hit, modified shift as much as you can in 2023 with Young playing where we saw so many third basemen play last year, and Seeger 
virtually behind second base. Perez does not want to go right in that same spot again in this at bat. Showed it once, got away with it. Don't do that again. That's outside. Away. Kyle Schwarber, historically a very good middle away hitter. Anything in, you have to be able to pound him in. He struck him out already twice on pitches like that tonight. Hit well. Right center, deep, going back. Garcia at the wall. He's there to make the catch. 408 feet away. And Turner back to first. Adolis Garcia kept going back and back, and people have talked about it. We've seen offense, but if you're going there, you got to hammer it. Great job by Garcia, knowing exactly where he's at. This is his ballpark. Look at the location of this pitch. Middle. Sounded beautifully, but Adolis on it. Good job by Carl Ravage. I had that one. I was, I was doing John Sterling. It is high. <laughs> it is far. I had that way out of here. Not Ravi. Ravi stayed with him. You told me to stay with him. <laughs> Were you pumping that left arm yeah, too? I, th I had that. I thought that was gone. Now Rio Muto. Ah! Strike one. How about the job Perez is doing <laughs> with the no, just a slide step, going home with it quick to the plate to give Jonah Heim an opportunity at second base if Turner decides to go. That's quick. Flat out to the shortstop, grounded out to third. Turner. Not a huge lead, and the quick pitch. Well, one is down and misses against Rio Muto. Generally speaking, pitchers that have such a quick move to home plate, a quick slide step, don't have that good a move to first base. So the way you counter the slide step is to get bigger leads, challenge him to throw them. Not going. Rio Muto fouls that straight back. See, I had to clear his hips right there for that 91 mile per hour in. This is typically where a lefty that has a good changeup like Martin Perez could throw it now on the 2 2 because he got him thinking inside. See how Real Muto counters. Real Muto, 21 steals, 22 homers last year. And only he and Pudge Rodriguez, who was on the K Rod show, had numbers like that. Swing and a miss. And Perez doing his Houdini, man. He is working around leadoff guys. They've had a leadoff hitter on. And he just never gives in. Four we, innings. We talk about the shadow style of pitching. Every pitch has a purpose. Every pitch is shooting for the corners. And if he misses, he doesn't panic. He just stays with that program. That was a loaded question to Meek Mill, wasn't it? Who you want to win in Philadelphia, a championship, Eagles, Flyers, Phillies, Sixers. It was a huge Philadelphia sports fan who is manager of the New York Yankees. Aaron Boone grew up, of course, with his dad in Philadelphia. Huge Sixers fan himself as that one is bounced into Castellanos. You're right. That was an alley oop question. I mean, just toss it. T and toss right there. <laughs> who, was Mo, uh, who, who was Booney's favorite basketball player? Was it Mo Cheeks? Mo Cheeks was big. He was yeah. huge into Andrew Tony. That whole generation. Julius Irving. Come on, come on, Turner, come on, they had him. Hold on a second. Home plate umpire Siegel comes out. They're going to send Turner back to first base. Siegel's doing a lot of hand motioning. But this is interesting because Trey Turner was 
had an unbelievable jump and it looks like Jonah Heim was the one that asked for time as he was seeing that jump. I think yeah Rob Thompson has to come out. Come out, time out, time out, time out. Catcher calls time out under a certain time on the clock. It's and at the same time considered a ball isn't it. No, Ravi, remember we had that situation in our exhibition like game. Disengagement. Yes, yes, exactly. They charged the pitcher, defensive team, with a disengagement. It's a great call by Jonah Heim right there. Yes, that's a, yeah, and Buster's all over it. And knowing that we still had a, a disengagement to give, if you will, a lot going on. So let's just, just sort of clean that up. So again, Heim calls time. With the pitch clock underneath the eight. You can see him. And now Turner's running the second base. So he calls time. That's considered a disengagement because you can't do that. Yes. But when you haven't used the disengagement, it brings Turner back to first and allows you to do that. Martin Perez and Jonah Heim combined to strike out Castellanos. I wonder how you take advantage of the rules. Are there any ways to do it? Jonah Heim just did it. Awesome. We're back, Falter's first pitch on the way, and that is down. We're at the bottom of the fifth inning, Philadelphia 0-2 to start, Texas 2-0 with all the runs they've scored. Aaron Nola struggled a little bit, Wheeler didn't have his best stuff, and the Texas offense jumped him as the manager said, that's a called strike. That's a pitch that he dropped in consistently, that curveball for strikes. Falter's landed it all night. Two. Taiwan Walker will go in game one against the New York Yankees tomorrow. A lot of folks assume you know, Walker's the number three guy. He should be pitching tonight. Bob Thompson said we want to split up the lefties. Ranger Suarez was going to be the lefty, and instead, Matt Strom is going to start game two of that series. So Walker goes in between Falter and Matt Strom. Two two hit hard and pass Turner off the bat. 
And in the hole for Mitch Garver. Garver has a couple of homers yesterday and a single here tonight. A reminder, T-Mobile customers get free MLB TV redeemed by April 3rd at T-Mobile.com slash MLB. Garver, the backup catcher, is aboard. Bottom of both orders trying to do some damage. Here's Jonah Heim, the catcher. for a strike because of the starts for Wheeler and Nola. He was hoping, Bob Thompson, five innings, stretch him a little bit out of falter. The bullpen's taxed a little bit. See, he's filling up the strike zone. Late on that one, Jonah Heim at 90 miles an hour. Is that partly because of the extension? Yeah, that's part of it's the extension, and part of it is his long drop and drive style that gets that long stride and he gets underneath the ball and actually pushes the ball that gets that spin and riding action. There's lots of different ways to get riding action up in the zone. Part of it is certainly it starts with his extension, how long that stride is, but the lower release point, he's almost underneath it a little bit. And you see that position of the wrist. Some guys can get underneath the baseball and get the, the, the right type of spin to make it ride up in the zone as well. Heim, 16 homers last year. And this one, a little shallow blooper, and it is caught just on the outfield grass by Bryson Stott. An example of a left-hander with that lower release point that gets that riding fastball that plays bigger is Nestor Cortez yep. of the Yankees, similar style. Here's Ezekiel Duran, and the first ah! pitch gets a hit, strike one. You talk a lot about ride on that four-seam fastball, kind of rises a little bit, and then Young, the guy that's orchestrating this team, putting it together for Texas, Chris Young, he and Bochi go back to days on the West Coast where he managed him for a year. That's a guy who through 88, 89, and nobody seemingly could really hit it very well. Yeah, above the belt. Yes. Right, just from the letters to the belt action. And what do you say? He was a he was aiming for the knee, and it ended up around the stomach, a little higher. Especially from his height, six ten. It didn't have that vertical drop that hitters are accustomed to seeing. It's still dropping, but not at the rate that us hitters were used to seeing it. Well, certainly wrist position and grip and how your fingertips come off of the seams matter. And Chris Young talked about talking to Kurt Schilling. Yes. The great Phillies yeah. pitcher about that. Beaten into the ground over the head of Falter. Turner will have one play to first. Third base was unoccupied, but Mitch Garver didn't necessarily think he either had a chance or recognize it. Oh, he's a, he's a catcher at heart still, though. <laughs> and a designated hitter. Tonight, he knows his limitations. Watch as he charges Sosa as well, paying attention and following the throw. And Alec Baum, who's the third baseman, looks up and is like, wait, you guys better get back there. Did he look up? Well, after the, <laughs> the catch. You know, Falter has to be one of the difficult lefties as a right-handed hitter to face just because of where the ball is coming from and on his release point. You guys talked about the extension, but it seems like it's coming right out of his left shoulder. Ah! Falls towards the third base side, clearing it. It's not like it's coming from the third base, from the second base angle, but right above the rubber. Pretty unique. Ahead of Semyon. And that one is into right field. Good piece of hitting. Garver to third. He's coming in. Throw coming home. Boom cuts it off to second. And out at second base is Semyon, and he will not argue it. He was unable to avoid the tag, but an RBI puts the Texas Rangers up by a score of two to one. Marcus Semyon, his debut on Sunday Night Baseball. Two hits and a rugby at rugby at
We're back. MLB play is back as well for 2023. Play beat the streak. Compete to win 5.6 million or try our newest game bingo. Claim real MLB prizes all season long. Restrictions will apply. See rules and join the fun today at MLB.com slash play. First pitch from Perez in there for a strike. Man, this is really, really a surprise for us to have Bryce Harper joining us from the Philadelphia Phillies dugout. Great to see you. At the baseball field again, Bryce. We, we were unaware of <laughs> when that was going to happen on the fly out to first. How are you doing? Doing good. Uh, just happy to be here and be around the guys and, um, you know, just trying to get my rehab going as best as possible and just try to be here as much as possible as well. So it seems to be going, you would know a lot better than we, but it seems to be going well. Is that fair? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're just trying to take it each, you know, each day and take it step by step pretty much just trying to uh, make sure I hit every every step that we kind of or every checkpoint we kind of mark off and or mark on and mark off and um, just excited to kind of be grateful for the progress of you know what I'm doing right now and just get through it each day. So what are you able to do? Uh, I mean you know I'm doing my whole routine in the cage and things like that I mean I just started doing that about a week and a half ago um, so I'm doing overhand pitching, things like that. Um, but, you know, we still got a still got a minute to go. You know, I think just trying to be smart about it, understanding, you know, my good days are going to be good. And then, you know, some days are just going to come in and I'm going to be sore and it'll be a little tougher. So um, but hopefully more good days than, you know, bad. And I feel good right now. So just got to keep that going and keep doing the same stuff. When you say routine now with the pitch clock, will that have to change a little bit with you in the box? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to have to progress to, you know, what I need to do, and I think that'll be part of the steps that of that process, right? So, um, you know, I know a lot of players that won our game back, right? Um, but as of right now, uh, you know, it is what it is. Josh Harrison up, and Bryce Harper joining us. The next one, and that one Howdy, is baby. into left field, and that is going to be a hit off the bat of Josh Harrison. So he is aboard with one down. Last time we saw you, Bryce, you were uh, doing this in the postseason. You had Reese Hoskins, the entire city of Philadelphia, up. Of course, you bring your hand across your chest right there. We see it. I assume the greatest home run you've ever hit in your life. How much did you reflect on 2022 as you went into this offseason knowing you were going to have surgery? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that was the that was the point, right? I kind of played through all last year, and I blew my elbow in April, and. You know, very lucky to have you know the designated hitter and be able to not miss too much time. Uh, I think I hit in the hand by Snell and you know missed about two months with that, but came back and I mean what a what a ride we were able to go on. Um, you know we're kind of trying to put that on the on the back burner of where that was and just try to look ahead and it's a different team that we got, different group that we got. So we're looking forward to you know kind of what our season is going to look like this year and, and keep plugging. One of the differences is Trey Turner. Did you play any role in the recruitment of Trey Turner? Uh, I mean, I talked to Trey at the beginning of the offseason and uh, kind of told him, you know, free agency is pretty tough to, to go through. And um, I know it's tough for, for a lot of guys that go through it. And he, if he needed anything, um, I was there for him. But I didn't want to. And that was pretty much all I told him. I didn't talk to him for a couple months and just let him go and, you know, go for his ride. And, you know, he was going to make the decision, the best decision for him and his wife and his family. And I was you know, very fortunate he made the decision to come to Philly. Swing and a miss. Did, you know, I'm, I'm going back to something you said. You said, did you say we want to get the game back? What, what was that? What were you referring to? And I'm sorry if I misheard you, but you said we want to, the players want to get the game back. Is, is that what you had said? I don't know. I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> Will you travel with the team, Bryce, the, for, for the remainder here? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm going to travel as much as possible when, you know, when my treatment and therapy when I can. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to be here as much as possible. I want to be around the guys, want to be on the group. You know, like I said, we got a couple new guys on this team, so I want to be around them and get to know them and, you know, understand them and things like that. So um, anytime I can be around the be around the players and be around the team, that's, that's all that matters. You haven't played the field in, in what feels like forever. I imagine it feels like forever for you. Not a baby. Yeah, Stott in the left field. And putting the brakes on at second base is going to be Harrison. You haven't played in the field forever. Does it feel that way to you, too? <laughs> yeah, I miss it out there. Sure. Um, it's always fun to get out there and be in, part of, you know, be in front of the fans and even on the opposing side, right? Like being able to 
be in front of a fan base that doesn't like you too much. It's always fun to you know get out there and interact with them and um, you know wherever that wherever that's at. You know it's it's always fun to be able to do that. So I miss it out there. You know, Bryce, you broke in when you were 19 years old. You're already a 10-year vet. That's a huge deal. 10-year vet. <laughs> you talked about you're only 30 years old. It's just <laughs> remarkable. The next 10 years. What do you think? Two more MVPs, maybe a couple championships? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just want to win. I mean, it, if, if everything else goes crazy, I just want to win. You know, that's, I think that's why every person in this dugout and every person that plays this game, we all just want to win. Um, you know, we want to be able to bring back a championship to the city of Philadelphia and be able to do that for a long time and hopefully, you know, do that multiple times. I mean, that's why Mr. Middleton and his family put so much effort into this team. and. They do that on and off the field, and I have so much respect for the Middleton family and Dave Dombrowski and what they do for us each and every day. They make sure we have all the best of the best. If that's in the clubhouse, if that's, that's away from the field, taking care of our families. There's no organization that does it better than this organization with that. And I mean, I just I think we owe that to them. We owe that to our fan base, uh, to the city of Philadelphia. And I mean, there's no greater place to play with the fan base that we do have. You guys saw what happened in the postseason last year. I mean, what an incredible atmosphere we that we were able to have and. You know, we don't have that without our fan base. We don't have that without Middleton putting the money that he does into our team and putting the faith into this organization and having Dave Dombrowski run this, you know, from top to bottom. I mean, it's just it's an incredible team that we have, an incredible staff that we have. And, you know, I look forward to those next 10 years, but taking it one day at a time. Yeah, you know, we talked to Trey yesterday. And one of the things he really emphasized was he said, you know, if you ask players, if you're a front office, you ask players, we really do like to stay in one place if we can. You certainly made that commitment. He made that commitment. What do you see in this team? I know you just touched on what Dave has done, but clubhouse culture, the competition in the National League East that excites you the most. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I could put the National League up with, or National League East with any division in baseball. I mean, look at the pitching. I mean, everybody talks about the Marlins and, yeah. oh, they're not that good and this, that, and the other. But you look at Lizardo, you look at Rogers, you look at Sandy Alcantara, I mean, this whole division, Cabrera as well there. You look at Scherzer, Sanga, I mean, Verlander. You can go on and on about this division and the pitching in this division. So it's always tough, but, you know, we look forward to that. We look forward to competing in the NL, you know, in the East for a long time and being good for a long time. And, you know, I know that every single individual in this dugout is, you know, ready for that, whatever that looks like. And anybody that comes into this clubhouse is, is part of that family and part of that group. And, you know, I know that, you know, we, Lost out on having Reese Hoskins all year, and that's tough yeah. for us. And, you know, I, I love Reese. We all do. He's, he's our leader. He's our captain. He's been here for a long time. Um, but, you know, we're going to go out there and play our best game and try to do that. What a play. what a play is right. Nathaniel Lowe at the railing makes the catch. Oh, what a play by Lowe. Hey, Bryce, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Keep getting better, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Watch this play by Nathaniel Lowe. Ends the inning. Brock Burke comes in, throws a pitch, and boom, we go to break.
Hope you're enjoying Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, presented by Casamigos Tequila. It's brought to you by those who drink it. San Diego State, UConn, Final Four. That's tomorrow night. Then, of course, we're on to the Masters, beginning April 5th, noon on ESPN Plus, 3 Eastern Time on ESPN. Exclusive first and second round coverage from Augusta. Once again, ESPN Plus, the featured whole featured group coverage all four rounds. And Sports Center will have dedicated coverage all week. Sign of spring, two of them. Baseball is back, and the Masters set to be played. Falter behind one zip, and he pitches into the sixth inning, and Seeger sends this one into the air. Shallow left, Turner is out, looks at Harrison, and he does not come up with it. Right at the last second, you could see Turner look to see where Harrison was, and he was unable to make the play. This is where Turner is going out, going back, and until Harrison he hears Harrison make a call, then he would stop. Harrison, not once, called for the baseball. It looks like Turner heard something else, but it wasn't Harrison. And once he stopped right there, the hit is called on Seeger. It's playing deep. Seeger's got very good pop the, the other way. Harrison, an infielder by trade. Seeger at contact. He was just notices right there. Even if he would have been running hard, he would not have been sent base. We'll never know. Yeah. So a leadoff man now on for the Rangers and Lowe, who made that tremendous defensive play in foul territory to face Falter for the third time tonight. Swings at the first one in the hole. Scott over there. Fires to first and gets him. Exactly what Major League Baseball was after when you eliminate shifts is a play like that. The athleticism of Bryson Stott. The year of the diving infielder is back. Dirty uniforms. This one's on artificial turf, but it's a fast infield here. It's Stott making a beautiful play, understanding the velo down the line of low, able to get him by hair. Great play. Not only getting there, but getting up and getting rid of it. Three of you once again going back out to talk to Bailey Falter. That's it for him. Yeah, I think it would be. Falter went six plus six times last year. Six and a third in August, the deepest outing of his career. Adolis Garcia is due up. He has struck him out twice. Walter had a 78% strike rate with his four seam fastball. That'll play. He filled it up. He filled it up, and now he will watch. We'll take a timeout with a runner on second. One down, bottom of the six of the 2 1 game.
Welcome back, everyone. Our game track brought to you by Geico. Fairly far, falter, I should say, five and a third, and Perez five and two thirds. Similar numbers. And given Bailey falter and what they needed out of him, Tony, they probably are pretty happy. Yeah, and his fastball plays much better up in the zone. We talked about the riding action. A couple of different kinds of breaking balls. The sliders there, the curveball there. I thought his curveball was excellent. The one mistake is when he gets a fastball down and out over the plate, and Young lost it the other way. So now it's Andrew Bellotti, and he did pitch yesterday. Phillies bullpen struggled. Craig Kimbrell came in, and he struggled. Bellotti just an inning, so a big spot for him. Adolis Garcia, Seager at second, strike one. Fifty-nine games last year, a workhorse for him, three thirty-one. Huge strikeout rate. Exactly. 78 strikeouts last year. S1 to right. Castellanos is over. He makes the play. Seeger heads to third. And he will slide in safely. That brings up the home run hitter, Josh Young. Well, a new feature we have this year is the bat path. And this happened in the second inning on Josh Young's home run. Pitch middle away. You see the bat path right there. Take a little step further. 83 miles per hour. Look at the sweet spot of the bat coming in from the angle and it exits at 101.7 miles per hour. Ball hit out in front, still hitting it to right center field. And that's the remarkable part of that, that feature, that graphic. Young on the ground, first pitch, and Bellotti gets the job done. Seeger stranded at third. Texas maintains a one run lead. For the fourth time, Trey Turner will lead off in this game for the Phils. You can listen to every MLB game live or on demand, new and included for 2023. Watch all minor league baseball and live look-ins on MLB Big Inning, and there are no blackouts. So Christian Pache has made the final out in three innings, which means Turner leads off for the fourth time. And the first pitch is outside. No blackouts? No blackouts. Whoa. No. It's a big deal. You know, you're all about the RSNs and where the future is going, streaming, etc. Paying attention. It's a big deal moving forward. Not only are the rules changing, the game is changing. How the sport is going to be consumed is radically changing potentially. 
2 0 from the lefty Burke. Turner hits this one deep to right field. Going back, Grossman, and he is just short on the track, and he reels that in. Turner's hit a couple of the track tonight. He's also got two hits. So, Kyle Schwarber, where do you pitch him, and where does he get all his power from? Right there. Tells you 2022, the home runs by zone. Only four in the inner part. And what has Texas done? They've pitched them in. The only time that it leaked over, it would have been a home run in 22 ballparks. Not this one. As Adolis Garcia made a nice play in center field. So Burke fires one in there, and that's called strike. Right at the bottom of the zone, 94 mile an hour fastball. Schwarber hits this one hard. That's going to get down in front of the center fielder, Garcia. Kyle Schwarber picks up his first hit, and look at the arms go up <laughs> of the 2023 season. Nobody celebrates his own success. Remember at Fenway when he made that play in the field, he raised his hands, and he does the same thing after his first hit tonight. First hit of the season for Schwarber. Self deprecation, a yes. very important part of this game as a player. You got to learn how to laugh at yourself. Not take yourself too seriously. Sounds like uh, Kyle Schwarber has that down to an he's, art. He's mastered. <laughs> That's why he's so loved in that clubhouse. <laughs> tell you the, the one thing Kyle Schwarber really hates to talk about is Kyle Schwarber. <laughs> he hates it. We got a pitching change here. Phillies one down, one on. Down a run, two one in the top of the seventh. And back after this. New pitcher is Jonathan Hernandez. He's up on the bump, and he'll get JT Riomuto. Off Tommy John surgery, he returned, and he has always been a hard sinker, high velocity guy. He's made one appearance so far, and Riomuto on the ground. One pitch, two outs, double play. Boy, Bruce Bochy's pressing the right buttons. His bullpen has been outstanding tonight, and it's taken him two pitches. As we go to break, here's the exclusive trailer debut of Marvel Studios' all-new original series, Secret Invasion. It's coming June 21st only on Disney+. Plus.
Hi, Butch. Um, two things. We'll get to the picture on the wall in a second, but I've, I've known you a long time. Like, I'm, you're a little bit taller than you used to be. What, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I, I am actually. Uh, Are you? I, I, I got a new knee. They, they, straight, they straightened out my left leg, and uh, now I'm 6'5", and I was 6'4", so I, I don't know what happened. But I, that's you gained what, that's, an inch yeah, with a new yeah, knee. I'm, I'm sure it's a knee. Come here. So 2010, that picture happens. You win the World Series in 12 and 14, then you're done, and now you're in this place. T tell me about this particular building we we kind of understand how you got here you said yeah i'm interested chris young your former guy but w look around have you ever been in a place like this no no it's the most incredible clubhouse i've ever been really in. it's forty thousand square feet and here's our our, our uh, brain trust here our uh, analysts uh, this is where they work in this room here and this is our coaching staff this is our meeting room here and uh, as you see it's just it's Dutch. You ever see a clubhouse like this? No, no. It's, it's, it's crazy how nice it is. You see the guys. Uh, Do you tell them how spoiled they are? They get a maid, don't they? And then you're out here. Yeah. Good luck with everything. Thanks. Welcome man. to your new home. All right, thanks. Good man. To see you, I thanks. I I'm getting to know my new home. Yeah. I, there's rooms here I haven't seen yet. I, I've been here less than a week. I've gotten lost. And a quick story <laughs> I'll tell you. I got stuck. I couldn't even get out. And my wife was trying to pick me up, and I didn't have the car to get out. So I ended up having to, I started to climb the fence. I go, no, I'm on video. So finally, I just sat there until somebody, until somebody, somebody found get, you. I still get lost here. So man with new knee was going to climb a fence and realized I'm on video, and he just waited for somebody to come find him. Very, very, very good. And now he's got a chance to add to this lead. Runner on second for Mitch Garber after a Grossman double. Connor Brock, the new pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. Smart move. Not kidding. <laughs> I'm in a fence. This feels like both teams, in particular the Phillies, but both teams have had opportunities. The bullpens have got those big outs, the double plays, the round. Ground balls. The Phillies, one for eight. They've left eight on base. And Brogdon's next one, that's in there for a strike. Two runs, three hits in an inning opening day for Connor Brogdon. All three inherited runners that day scored. Shallow center. Stott out, he waves his arms, and that indicates the both outfielders. I got it. Garver retired. Here comes Jonah Heim. Stream every Art of Market MLB game live or on demand. New and included for 2023. Stream all minor league baseball. Blackout and other restrictions do apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Rangers won for four tonight in the first two games. This is one of the reasons they scored all their runs, 27 of them. The Grossman is off to a terrific start offensively as Hines swings and misses. Yeah, he's been swinging the bat really well. He's very patient at the plate, historically has been, but he's been a lot more aggressive. Starting in spring training this year, he decided to just let it fly and see if he can open up the zone. But a lot of trust he has with that hand eye coordination from both sides of the plate. You know, this new look Ranger team's going to learn a lot in the first month. They have this series, they got Houston, they have the Yankees in the first month. So they'll be tested. Guy, his instant credibility with his three World Series with the Giants, and he acknowledged when, when it was over, like he was the one that was driving the boat. He was done. He needed to get into a shop and get his body right. Good pitch from Brogdon. Down goes Heim, literally and figuratively. That brings up Ezekiel Duran. Michael K taking notes as Cole Hamels has now joined the K Rod telecast. The city of Philadelphia. 
and you know that fan base and so Hamels of course you know, with both these the organizations in common good pitcher too man he was really good with the Phillies so we're able to really bounce off each other uh, and get through and then you know, and Brogdon's first pitch misses away 1 and 0 that is the K Rock cast on ESPN 2 See Brogdon on that third base side of the rubber big feet and that one was fouled straight back Carl, you were talking about the personality of the Rangers. I don't know if you were like me after spending a couple days with this team and you look around at all these even keeled great pros, Marcus Simeon, yeah. and Corey Seager, and Josh Young. I mean, th this team has a great personality. Yeah, and I think a lot of these organizations, Buster, are looking for that. That's pulled foul down the line. I think people will look at what Anthopolis does in Atlanta. Just certain teams go after certain personalities. I think. I think the White Sox now with your buddy Pedro Grafol there as manager, they're going to have an identity. A lot of it's reflective of the manager. A lot of it is. A lot is reflective of the manager, the community as well. And you're right about Atlanta. That's a great case, and Chicago's another one. Center field just two steps back for Pache. He's under it, stranded at second. It's going to be Grossman after the leadoff double. The old team struggling to knock the runners in. Seven here on Sunday Night Baseball. 2 1 Rangers. Welcome back, everybody. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Casamigos Tequila, brought to you by those who drink it. Some of the art around the ballpark, and how about that? The old Rubnet Odor shot to Jose Bautista. That Velasquez underscore art underscore for some of that streets of Houston, Houston with the basketball, and here in Dallas with the baseball. And Nathaniel Lowe can't get that one. It's out of play. The punch heard around what the world right two countries anyway. People still get the second base of Rubnet Odor is there and they kind of duck. And <laughs> <laughs> really keep your eye on that guy. Ventura Nolan Ryan I mean you think about other kind of famous confrontations punches. Ouch. Wow how about that run. Veritech Alex. That was a good one yeah it's, can you can you. Cross over to K Rod and ask Alex that question right now. <laughs> hey, look where we are. Nolan Ryan, Robin Ventura. Exactly. That's what I said. Exactly. And Castellanos chasing there. That's filthy. That sequence right there was absolutely filthy. 
go two seamer in the hands and then you throw that as a hitter you're thinking in look at the hips just fly out. Look at the ump cam. Just blow the bubble. I get it. Been there. Rangers have made some defensive moves in the outfield Travis Jankowski to center field Garcia has moved into right and Grossman moves over to left. That'll be foul. You know those shots from home plate we're seeing when you have a guy that throws this hard and then he has a slider that can make a left hand turn it just shows you how hard it is for okay. hitters to make that quick decision and not chase that pitch because you have to start it soon enough to hit the fastball. Yep. Will Smith warming in the bullpen. Man, this one to right going back. Adolis Garcia had a basket catch just before the wall. That's a heck of a play. Oh, yeah, just, you just moved into right field. He just moved to right field. Bruce Bochy putting pushing all the right buttons. He's putting First, on a clinic tonight. First on the mound and then defensively Jankowski goes to center. Aloli takes a peek at the wall. A couple doors down we have Doug Glanville on the call for on ESPN radio. And that's one thing that he always says you look at the ball then the wall ball again and you make the play. He brings in Brock Burke one pitch one out. He goes to Hernandez gets the ground ball double play. He moves his outfield around and Garcia makes a great play in right. Maestro right now from Bruce Bochy. Two down for Harrison. And that's serious sink and the only way that you can consistently hit that ball in the air is actually if you drive it the other way as a right handed hitter. Exactly what Alec Baum did. Ah! Talking with Boach before the game, and the size of the player, even from when he left, like the size of the player has changed so dramatically. Beaten it on the ground. First baseman Lowe is there to make the play. And the Ranger bullpen, well, they fixed a lot of their pitching. Deficiencies right now we're seeing it all over the place starters and the bullpen the defense is also important Garcia takes near home run away early low up against the railing and Garcia in right clinic from Texas trying to sweep this series.
Dodgers. Next week, Sunday night baseball matchup. Padres in Atlanta for a game with the Braves. They finish up that four-game series. We'll be at Truist Park right here on ESPN. Also available on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio. We'll start at 6 Eastern baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. Back here in Texas with Eduardo Perez, David Cohn, and Buster Olney. I'm Carl Ravich. Bottom of the eighth inning. I don't know what the pitching matchups are next weekend, but I'm manifesting right now. Spencer Strider. <laughs> Spencer Strider. I got bad news for you, Coney. Dylan Dodd, possibly. Buster. I should have known. Buzz, buzz killing Coney. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan's going to deal. Dylan's good. No offense. You just love Spencer Strider. <laughs> So Gregory Soto who did not have a good debut with the Philadelphia Phillies in his first outing. He said he felt a little bit unlucky. The numbers were not good at all. But he said he was a little bit unlucky. A little soft hit little blooper. Thank you. One of Dave Dombrowski's moves here get this guy. They really feel like the two numbers the K rate and the base on ball rate can move in opposite directions with his stuff upper 90s fastball. Good job there and there's some indication of what he can do with Semyon. he is retired. With a strikeout one down here in the bottom of the eighth. Take a look at Statcast powered by Google Cloud. And then Corey Seager in the first inning that single was so hard hit it was amongst the hardest hit balls of his career at 112.3 miles an hour. Again, this guy was crushed by the shift. The first pitch he swings at, he misses. Think about it this way. He pulled 107 balls into the shift, which was the most by a lefty last year. He had six hits on those balls, which is an 056 batting average. Think he was happy okay, to see the okay. shift go away? No, no, he got the Get grounded, man. Get right up with that earth. This is what he did pregame. Right here. This is the one Coney and I would be doing before games right there. I did that at the State Fair in Kansas one year. <laughs> did you? <laughs> as, as part of it, was that a contest? Yes. Just like it. A race? Yes, it was a race. How'd you do? I lost. I could never run. How heavy was the ball? It was a pumpkin. Oh, it's a pumpkin. <laughs> no handles. No handles. No handles. Did you spike it when you were done? Like you, you lost, you were angry, you smashed the pumpkin? We could smash him at the end. You that could, was I'm fun sure. Part. Yeah. <laughs> Got some good memories of the Kansas Fairs? No. Both have... sides. I'm on State Line Road, Missouri and Kansas. So you can get them both. Swing and Seeger down. Much, much better, more efficient effort from Soto here through two. I think you might see. Whoops. <laughs> <sighs> you know, Lindor, no such thing as a wrong seat out here. You're right. Ah, <sighs> much better. I'm assuming with that campaign they're going to eventually fill all the seats because that is one of the things as you watch that they had Sue Bird in there they had Jason yeah. Tatum in there and now when door shows up season long I'm guessing I kind of like it ah! I want to know where that beach is I want to know what you ate at the county fairs <laughs> <laughs> barbecue just lots of it lots of barbecue I can see you with a big old turkey leg. <laughs> I got the sense just listening to the post game comments from Gregory Soto beyond unlucky he, he was pretty upset about the way things transpired in that first game he was angry and we're seeing a little different Gregory Soto tonight. Ooh, a 
what happened to Jose Alvarado last year and how he became such a force. They believe Soto is capable of the same thing and this could be a very quick one two three innings and inning and it was. And it was Semyon Seeger and Lowe. Seven eight nine coming up four hits between Sosa and Stott ninth inning Rangers trying to close it sweep the series back on Sunday night baseball. Sports Center is next. John Anderson, Kevin Connors, star of the game from this one, will join the show. Eduardo's going to hang around, give the key points from baseball's first weekend. And congratulations to Kim Mulkey. LSU shuts down Caitlin Smith and Iowa. They win their first championship. And another ring for Kim Mulkey, an amazing story in LSU for the women's basketball team. San Diego State, UConn tomorrow night. Coverage all day on Sports Center. Sports Center is right after the baseball game here on ESPN and the ESPN app. Here's Will Smith. They gave him a one year, one and a half million dollar deal. He said, I like old school managers. He's reunited with Bochi. He pitched with them in 18 and 19 with the Giants. And now he will try to close this game out. Sosa Stott, and we'll see Pache to bat. Front like that, you figure it's going to be 96, and instead it comes in a lot slower than that. A slider at 90, 81 miles per hour. Okay. 83, and how do you look late on that? What, what is it? Deception? What's that cut exactly? That deception because you're thinking fastball, now you have to slow yourself down. By the time you realize and recognize the pitch. Pitch calm here with two strikes apparently not working as the pitch clock was winding down. Will Smith said I can't hear anything. Well maybe it works now. Sometimes you just got to bang it like the remote control at home just banging on the couch. <laughs> power off power yeah. on. Could be a veteran move right there I, as well. I don't think there's any doubt, Eduardo. That was absolutely a pitch clock winding down. Oh, but you know what? Pitch comes not working. It certainly felt that way. 0 2. Beaten into the ground. Young's been great all night at third, and he throws across the diamond. One down. He's really set the tone. Set the tone with the home run, and before that, and he continues to do it defensively. He's come in beautifully. He's gone to his left as well. He's turned two. It's a beautiful thing for any organization. You got a number one draft pick that looks like the answer. 
for a lot of years at third base. A huge lift for any organization. One down, Bryson Stott. Ah! Really good pitch from Smith, 93 miles an hour. Set up outside, the 0-1. And they hit the glove just a little too far outside. Well, Thompson's put Derek Hall in the on deck circle, who will be lefty on left. Next one. And a good slider. Actually, 0 for 3. One strikeout looking. Did not get the ball out of the infield, and they're looking for some pop. One swing to try to tie it. Or take the lead. Thank you. The one two fouled straight back. He grinds out some at bats. Might have been frustrated last year fouling off a lot of fastballs, but they are long at bats, make, making the pitch the pitcher work. In the air, shallow left coming in, and Seeger basket catch going out is there to make the play. Bobby Grossman was playing fairly deep. Seeger was the only option, and a nice play by Seeger. It was the only option. You are right, Ravi, and it's him or nobody over the shoulder. That's really difficult. You're going back. You have to listen, know where your outfielders are. I love the and right hand. Panic. I love the right hand going underneath the glove just to kind of make it feel like a bigger basket. How about this? So Will Smith, remember, Bochi tried him as a closer in San Francisco in 18. He saved 34 games in 19. He says about his role, I'm an older guy. I get the computer stuff these days, but it's refreshing to have a guy who trusts his gut sometimes. That's a little bit of the pushback from the player who thinks, I, I know that guy really, really well, and I like the way he goes about it but he's into the analytics he understands it here you go two down and Hall all sorts of power in his back off the plate ball one that's what Joe Torre used to call managing the heartbeat yep Bochi understands the heartbeat one ball one strike Rangers struggled last year in one run games, only winning 15 of those. Bruce Bochy managing the defense and the bullpen. Excellent tonight. One ball, one strike. Oh, no. That's down and away. Two balls and a strike. If Hall can reach, Trey Turner in the top of the order is up next. Nine home runs in 42 games last year for Hall. Ooh, right down the middle. Thank you for touching that. I did. Beaten into the ground right at Young. It's been his game and it's over. The Texas Rangers, what a start to the season. They sweep the defending National League champion Phillies. Bruce Bochy and company are 3-0. They win it 2-1. Well-pitched game. Both starting pitchers did their jobs. They threw a lot of strikes. They got some breaks along the way. They made pitches when they, they had to, but all in all, well-pitched game. And defense. Defense came up big. The fly balls. Uh, in the outfield they were able to run him down and in the infield when it was hit they made those as well they have now won 12 in a row against the Phillies.
Perez the winner in front of 25,000. It took two hours and 24 minutes to play. For our entire production crew, Buster only, Eduardo Perez, David Cohn, I'm Carl Ravitz. Thanks so much for watching. Rangers win at 2-1. The Sports Center, Kevin and John, starts now.